Hello and welcome back to the Mindset Project Podcast. My name is Lewis Condy and my aim is to give you the tools to develop and improve your mindset. By drawing on my own experiences as a competitive swimmer, as well as the opinions and experiences of other incredible individuals, I hope to expose you to an alternative way of thinking. And in doing so, I hope that inspires some sort of personal growth. I believe that through mindset development, we can strive physically, mentally and emotionally. I hope you're all doing well, staying positive and staying healthy. So let's get on to it. Welcome back to another episode of the Mindset Project Podcast. This is episode 26 and in this episode I will be looking at the topic of confidence. I think it is a very interesting topic and I actually think it's something that a lot of people struggle with. So I just want to explore what it is, discuss ways in which we can improve our confidence and how I developed my own confidence as Believe it or not, I used to be extremely shy and I hope that sharing my own experiences it might help you if you're listening to build your own confidence if that is something that you struggle with. And firstly, I just want to say obviously this is probably the first episode I've done in two or three weeks and the reason for that is I've just been extremely busy with a whole lot of things. My energy has been all over the place um, but I have been writing episodes, planning episodes, I'm contacting different guests, so I have been doing a lot of podcast work in the background. I've just not I've just not been able to find the time to record, edit and do all that sort of stuff and it does take a lot of time. And just to quickly recap, the last episode, which was episode twenty five, we, we had Evelina on and we discussed all things about frustration, anxiety, burnout and it's definitely a very very interesting episode so if you are you're new here and you've not heard that episode yet or watched it because we are now on youtube please go back have a watch have a listen because it's very very interesting and to quickly point on that note as well we are obviously on youtube as well so if you are listening on spotify apple podcasts or any other podcast um streaming service please go over to youtube give us a subscribe over at the mindset project podcast you know just type in search engine the mindset project and it should come up and by doing that you can help us grow over on youtube as well and being able to grow the podcast and grow the channel will help me um, improve the sort of content that i'm able to provide i can get more interesting guests more high profile guests and all of that support is really really helpful so that was quite a quick intro slash detour so let's get on to this episode. So what is confidence? Simply put, it is the belief in oneself or the belief in yourself. And to be confident, it means you have the belief that you can succeed when you are facing life's challenges or coming up against some sort of challenge. And it can also include feeling secure in the knowledge of your own capabilities as well. And I think it's important to note as well that confidence is a skill that is acquired over time. Now, many people will argue that some people are just born confident, but I would 100% disagree with that because I don't think anyone is born anything other than a baby. You know, you would never say that is a confident baby because it just, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't sound right because it just doesn't, right? And... Yes, you know, genetically we might have some genes that allow us to become better things than others, but I wouldn't necessarily say that you are born confident, if that makes any sense. And I personally think on the day that we're all born, we're all giving a blank canvas and it's our journey through life which we start to paint that canvas. So, you know, our experiences, our life lessons, because we don't all have the same experiences, the same life lessons, etc. And it's this ex- experience of life that gives us that ability to paint that canvas and everyone's canvas is going to look different. And, you know, when it comes to confidence, we can be confident in many areas of our life and in many areas we won't be confident. And it's entirely possible to be super, super confident in one area of your life and every other area of your life you lack any confidence. 
and you know in those areas where we are confident it's where we have obtained lots of, of experience or knowledge in that area because that is how we gain confidence it's through experience and like I said at the start it's, de- it's developed over time and most importantly experiences that make us uncomfortable also pr- help promote personal growth and help us build our confidence. Now Gaining confidence takes time, like I've already said, and can only be achieved when we practice something over and over and over again. Now, for instance, speaking in front of a large crowd may seem very daunting at first, but when you do it often and repeatedly, your confidence will eventually grow because you're getting used to that and you start to develop your own style. You start to develop something that works for you. And by by doing that, that is where that confidence will grow. And another example which I guarantee every single person listening to this right now will relate to is learning to ride your bike. Like when you, you know, had your stabilizers on your bike, you'd have to do that over and over again before um, being able to take them off. And then once you took them off, it took practice, it took time to learn to ride your bike without stabilizers. And the more you did that, the more confident you got, the better you got at it. And as you got better at it, that confidence improved so you know confidence isn't something that you just have it's something that you know develops over time and you know some people just have natural confidence but it's definitely something that has um, developed over time now if you're wanting to improve your confidence one thing I would suggest you do is do things that make you feel uncomfortable now that might seem pretty counterintuitive because it makes you uncomfortable why would you want to do something that makes you uncomfortable surely you would want to be doing something that makes you feel confident because you know being confident helps practice that that feeling however by doing things that make us uncomfortable we gradually become more comfortable doing that thing, which is also how we develop confidence. And remember what I said at the start, being confident is also a feeling of secure, feeling secure. So when you are, when you do something that you're comfortable with, more often than not, it's because you feel secure doing that thing or you feel confident, whether that's, you know, speaking in front of a large group of people, talking about your hobbies, your interests, your passions, all those sort of things, you feel confident talking about them because they are things that make you feel comfortable. Whereas being uncomfortable makes you feel insecure because it's not something that you're used to doing, but by doing more of that, over time you will gradually become more secure, more comfortable, and as a result, more confident. Now, as an example, we're gonna talk about something that I did and I'm pretty sure a lot of people did during COVID. So I decided to bleach my hair during COVID. Like it was sort of one of these trends that was going on. People were doing crazy haircuts, dyeing their hair, all sorts of colors, mostly because the fact that we were locked inside for months, no one was going to see us. So to be honest, it didn't really matter what we looked like. Now I made an absolute mess of it and my hair was more yellow than it was blonde. Now, for about a week, I wore a hat because I kind of felt so embarrassed and comfortable because it looked so bad and people were constantly staring at me. I then thought, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, I can't see my hair. And I just thought, I'm going to have to get used to this anyway because it's going to take months and months for my hair to grow back because I've bleached it. So I've basically just killed off my hair. So it's going to take a lot longer for it to grow through. So I just got on with it I got used to it I accepted the fact that I'm going to have to get used to this and that's what I did you know and from that moment on I haven't really cared what I look like and that's going to sound pretty pretty bad but it's true like for me personally I am don't mind what I wear when I go to fancy restaurants like I'm happy to wear my gym clothes so like my joggers t-shirt a fleece or jumper or whatever because to me going to a restaurant comfort is more important than looking good and using this as an example if you are going to a a fancy restaurant obviously there might be this sort of feeling that you need to dress up however why does it matter what you wear when you go to have dinner do you know what I mean because the chances are when you go to a restaurant the people that you are going to see in that restaurant you're probably never going to see 
in your life ever again. So why does it matter what you look like when you go to this fancy restaurant and have food? Do you know what I mean? And you know, if you are someone who feels like they have to get dressed up to go for a meal or go to some sort of event, then maybe you should try going to a restaurant, wearing casual clothes, wearing something that makes you feel comfortable because that might be something that you find uncomfortable and you know as we've already discussed before doing things that make us uncomfortable help us build confidence and in this particular example you know there might be social pressures to look good going to a restaurant or whatever and when you go to a restaurant more often wearing casual clothes you're confident because It doesn't matter what you wear, it doesn't matter what other people think, so it definitely self-confidence in particular, at least in this example. Now, next thing that helps us improve confidence is setting goals and meeting them. And the reason for this is because meeting goals we set ourselves, we provide ourselves with a sense of achievement and the idea that I can do this. And like I've previously said, that when we do things over and over, we start to develop confidence. And the reason behind this one is when you achieve a goal you set yourself, that gives you a boost, it gives you a confidence boost because you have been able to achieve that. So that sort of allows you to set other goals, allows you to set higher goals and be able to achieve them. So like I say, doing things over and over again, especially when it comes to our goals, will help you gain confidence. And another great way of improving your confidence is through acceptance. Now, acceptance of your emotions, including difficult emotions, is really important instead of avoiding them. Now, if you feel stressed, acknowledge that feeling. And when it comes to stress more specifically, take a few deep breaths to ground yourself and ask what you can do right now to alleviate that feeling. So ask yourself, why am I feeling stressed? What is it that's made me feel this way? And if it is something that you can control and you can do something about, then obviously do that because by doing that thing and changing whatever it is you need to change, that's going to alleviate that feeling of stress. Now, if it is something that you can't control, it's something that's in your external environment that is out with your control, then accept it for what it is because there's absolutely no point stressing about something that you can't control because if you try and change something out with your control you're probably going to make yourself more stressed more frustrated and that is just not what we want to do so accepting our feelings accepting things for as they are and accepting things that we can't control is definitely a really good way of helping us boost confidence because it allows us to say there's only so much that we can do as individuals and that is okay The next thing on my list to improve confidence is speaking up for yourself. And this might seem extremely daunting, especially when you might have to speak up to someone, whether that's an employee, a work colleague, even a parent, or even a friend, or your significant other. It could be that you're having to speak up because you're being treated unfairly or with disrespect, and you end up standing up for yourself. And when you do this, it will no doubt help improve your overall confidence because you're saying that I deserve to have respect and you know I know my self-worth and you're standing up for that so when you stand up for yourself you're you're sort of standing up for what you deserve and standing up for your boundaries and that is only gonna boost your self-confidence. Now regarding confidence something I always say is balance and that's going to be something I repeat throughout this all these podcast episodes and probably bring up with guests as well is that you don't want to become too confident that it stumbles into the region of arrogance obviously you can still be confident without being arrogant and one thing that kind of annoys me is when people see people who appear to be confident but just brand them as arrogant when it isn't necessarily true and one thing i think about confidence is that it is also about being self-aware of both your strengths and your weaknesses and when it comes to your weaknesses being able to overcome these and this gives you that sense of being capable because you know what you can or can't do now am i confident now i would say so yes but i wasn't always and i remember one of my biggest fears was having to do a talk at school where you were made to memorize two to three a4 pages of notes and i absolutely hated that 
I also wasn't very self-confident either because I was kind of podgy before I started swimming, so I was kind of self-conscious. Like even in the first couple of years I started swimming, I did feel quite nervous just wearing, you know, my jammers, like my sort of training stuff. And I definitely think swimming has helped me become a lot more confident and doing things that have made me feel uncomfortable. Obviously, swimming is a sort of individual sport so when you're up behind a block you're, you sometimes do feel very alone and you often feel like a lot of people are watching you and obviously setting goals and achieving them has also been a huge part in that as well. Now quickly before I go any further I can't remember if I said this earlier but when you don't do things that make you uncomfortable how can you become comfortable doing them? and the, you need to do these things in order to become more comfortable and that means making hard decisions so that you can have an easier life um, and you know when I started doing TikTok I was really nervous because I was putting myself out there into a world where you know people get so offended for absolutely anything and especially if it's something that you say that they don't like but now I'm a lot more confident with it even the thought of speaking in front of a huge group of people makes me nervous but that's just a natural thing as we're all human beings and to quickly touch on this if you are nervous that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not confident because ner nerves are a sign that you care about something and when it comes to nerves the key is channeling these in a positive way and knowing how to do that is key because if we channel them in a negative way that is where we start to develop things like anxiety and self-doubt which are obviously the opposite of confidence coming to the end of the episode one technique that you can do is called 20 seconds of courage and how this works is that you only need to be courageous for 20 seconds to act on a decision by acting on a decision we are forced to do something that we might feel uncomfortable and that as we have discussed doing things that make us uncomfortable lead to confidence now an example of this might be you know posting something to social media how many of you listening right now have wanted to post a picture to instagram but you're th sort of thinking is the post right is the caption right have i got the right hashtags what are people going to think of my face my hair etc and you only need 20 seconds to press that post button and more often than not when you post that everything that happens after is fine it's actually the leading up to posting that which is probably the most nerve-wracking thing and having that 20 seconds of courage to say right I can do this press it boom gone when that happens in that very short period of time you sort of realize that what you were thinking what you were nervous about shouldn't have been it like you shouldn't have actually been nervous about it because there was nothing to be nervous about I think it's just the actual thought of doing that which is where we don't have confidence so that is could be a technique that you might want to try. So to conclude, confidence is something that we all have. It is something that we all have, but in different quantities and in different areas of our lives. And that is really important. Now, the key to gaining more confidence is doing things that make us uncomfortable because it is by doing these things that make us uncomfortable where we grow as individuals and we gain our confidence. And confidence is about the belief that you have in yourself and acknowledging both your strengths and weaknesses and being able to use these to your advantage. So obviously doing something over and over again that will boost your confidence because you believe you can do it, you've done it before, you can do it again. And once you do it a third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, etc. That is going to sort of snowball and build your confidence. And to quickly end on, is confidence is something that obviously takes time. It's not something that you can just click your fingers and you've got it. Sometimes, for some people, being confident, building confidence might take months, weeks, and for some people, even years. Now, that's all I'm gonna say about confidence. I feel like it's went on longer than I planned it would, which hopefully is a good thing. And just to remember what I said at the start, we're now on YouTube, so please go over there, subscribe, like, gauge with the videos over there, and that helps me grow my channel, grow the podcast, reach more people, and spread more positivity. And with that, um, stay positive, stay safe, and I shall see you on the next one.